I'll turn it on later. Oh my gosh, here we go, Jay. Hi, okay. I'm Chris Letha. This is The Economy and You. Welcome to the show, folks. <laughs> uh, today's my special guest is Jay Fidel. Would you imagine that? Thanks for coming to the show, Jay. <laughs> Well, I, I needed to get, this is like having a strong cup of coffee is to be with Chris Lee. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we were talking about before the show today, we were, we were going to talk a little bit about some of the conservative issues and things that are going on uh, with the debates of the Republican Party. Uh, Donald Trump has made an, a, a very interesting race uh, already. So uh, viewership is up. Um, there's more discussion because he is not your typical evangelical uh, hardcore right wing. Well, wishing. in many ways, thank, thank goodness for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Republicans are in such. A <laughs> well, you know, um, we we're talking about you know the last couple of days. Um, uh, well, Trump made this pronouncement that uh, that uh, the Chinese aren't afraid of Obama. They don't respect Obama, you know, and they've demonstrated this by um, loosening the their peg of the renminbi or the one to the u.s dollar and of course and they did that because of obama they did that because of obama i'm not sure that's quite why they did that but <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i think it makes for good sound bites if you're an unsophisticated person when it comes to understanding the markets you might feel that way the reality of that of course is that the chinese have now found themselves in a wedge they are shooting for a very high growth of seven percent uh, out of their uh, out of their economy, but they're not getting it. Well, you know, let's siphon off a little off the Americans, off the of the United States, right? So they reduce their currency, or they reduce the 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 the, the peg, I guess. They've loosened the peg mm -hmm. of their currency they to our currency. They devalued the currency, it, yeah. and by they let the sort of let the market play it out, yeah. and it's devalued the they currency. They did it twice already. Well, two yes, days. they've done it the last two days, and yeah. of course, this had major fallout in the European markets. Uh, it's had a fallout yesterday, of course, we got whacked pretty hard. Uh, today, um, I woke up at 3.30 in the morning just to watch what was going to happen in the market. And it was a bad dream. Like you said earlier, it was a bad dream. Uh, and I watched it fall uh, steadily uh, from one percentage point down to almost two percentage points on the Dow. So it was over 350 points that the Dow was down. This was horrific. Now, if you were sitting on the sidelines waiting for an opportunity to buy, jump perfect, in. Good perfect, time to buy. Perfect. Yes. Well, somebody did. Somebody That's why did. it went up again. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people jumped in and started buying. They, they realized there was no good reason for the, for the drop. You know, it got right in. Yeah, there's absolutely no reason. I mean, the Japanese stock market over the last couple of years is devalued by 35%. No, no matter us. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't care, right? And all that did is really hurt. Well, I mean, for the Japanese, it's enhanced their ability to export. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's made their cars more competitive against our own because of their, their price yeah. differential. Yeah. But Americans tend to buy the car they want anyway. Amen Americans tend to overreact to things like this on the market. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we live in a global community now, and anything that happens anywhere... Um, that's dramatic, even if it's not necessarily bad, has an effect on the market. Well, it has an effect on the market. But, you know, and some of this is sort of what happens is there's sort of an initial emotional response. But you now have software out there that tracks all these things on Twitter. So if there's all of a sudden this communication on Twitter, mm -hmm. this will start generating computer-generated sales. Trades, yes, exactly, trades. So it's not people trading the market. It's software trading the market. And then once you sort of fall below hitting certain price points, that triggers options, additional trades through the, you know, the options market, which, of course, um, Disney, Viacom, uh, 21st Century Fox, uh, these are just a few of the multimedia companies that got hammered in the last, the last few days. Not just because of currencies, but some, because of something that Eichner said. Okay? But well, I, it shows you how, how volatile, how, how um, you know, uh, super sensitive the market is to anything and everything and global anything happens anywhere and it affects the market this is kind of a scary time the market is jittery may i use that term uh, yes it's highly volatile yeah. is, is the we, word we, they we, would we, use on reacts TV. to things and you yes. know furthermore i mean you talk about the analysts i think sometimes the analysts make it worse uh i wish they'd cool it a little bit you know <laughs> sometimes i think the analysts are you know we think that analysts are so terrific. In fact, Chris, 
they're younger than you and they're younger than me and they probably don't know as much on many subjects and they make mistakes and people think they walk on water and it affects the market. Well, they think they walk on water. If you're working for <laughs> Goldman Sachs and you're making five, $500,000 a year plus a year, I mean, don't you think you walk on water? I mean, you're making that kind of money. You're they testing do, but I don't, your ego a little. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not the money that makes the difference. You know? Right, right. But, you know, I, I wanted to mention to you in connection with any discussion of the market, the most interesting thing happened oh, within the last couple of days. And as these guys were uh, prosecuted, indicted, I'm not sure what, for stealing press releases. Yes. That is so remarkable. And it was, it was hackers. Yes. You've got to love those hackers. Yes. Yeah, you've got to love the hackers. And it sounds so innocent. Oh, he stole the <laughs> press release. Who gives a rip about a press release? Right. You know, we get so many press releases. You don't believe half of it anyway. Well, some of them are, you know, a lot of press releases are, are, are people who are not disinterested parties who have bought a bunch of stock and they're, they're going to tell the world that it's going to go up further to generate more interest so they can get out from underneath a position that they know they shouldn't have been in in the first place. But they're going to find some poor schmuck out there who's going to believe what he says <laughs> and buy the stock so he can get out from underneath of it. And so these guys uh -huh. are stealing, yes. they were hacking in to get press releases that hadn't been issued. Right. And the press releases apparently would, they believed, would have an well, they rightly believe it would have so, yes. a, an effect on the market. So uh -huh. they had early exposure to whatever was in these press releases, and they would make trades in advance on the basis of these early That's stolen right. press right. releases. Now, the, and they made a lot of money. They only Hundreds made $100 million. million. Oh, oh, Jay, okay. they only made $100 yeah, million. Yeah, after a while, it gets to be real money. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, you know, the thing They're is... They're going to go to jail, you know. You know, that. yeah, somebody's <laughs> going to go to jail. But the, the thing is, they, they made their first $30 million. Well, they realized that they had stolen $30 million. But now after they arrested them and they put the heat on them, they realized they've actually stolen more than that. You're they right, stole $100 right, million. Right, right, right. What's interesting is that, you know, we don't take hacking really seriously. I mean, you know, it happens all the... You know, I, you know sort of the, the apology, the governmental apology, the community apology. Well, it's just a bunch of kids happens all the time. They're mm -hmm. just being wise guys when they steal the Office of the Personnel <laughs> records for all those government employees, or, assuming it wasn't China. We don't know that for sure. Well, we think these, these were hackers are out of Eastern Europe and some people in the United States, right? I think it was a combination of oh, Eastern Europe. The one in the news releases, yes. Yes, yes. These were a combination of some local boys. Several countries, yes. uh, Eastern Europe, the uh -huh. U.S. Very interesting that they were collaborating. Yes, it is. And I bet they were all young guys, too. Yeah, yeah just playing. Yeah. And you can't get too angry at them, you know, for just playing. But start to take $100 million out of the market and effectively skewing the market against the legitimate traders, you start getting ticked off. And yes. the U.S. attorney starts saying to himself, I've been waiting for a good cause celeb to go after these hackers. That's I'm right. going to indict those guys. Yes, yes. And, and show the world that hacking is not permitted in any form. But you know, Jay, it also shows that you need to take seriously. If you're somebody who needs to be safeguarding this information, you need to take it seriously and invest the kind of money into the software or software development that makes sure that these guys can't get well, into That's a very interesting stuff. question you raise. Because, you know, so I'm the guy who's generating these <coughs> press releases, mm -hmm. and I'm holding it behind some some barriers so right. that people like these guys from Bulgaria, whatever it is, right. you know, can't, can't get into it. Now, how far exactly do I have to go? It's only press releases. No, but the no, thing is, it's all data. They, when they got it, they got it when it was data. They didn't get a printed report. They got the data. They got the information. Uh, somebody compiled somebody this wrote information. It up. Somebody, somebody wrote, wrote it up. It up. But these press releases and they, and they aren't printed on paper. And got it before it was released. That's right. I mean, these systems should have been protected adequately by by some rather sophisticated firewalls. If it's in a you database, it should have been properly encrypted. Hundreds of thousands of dollars with, uh, you know, these doesn't cost that much hacking anymore. organizations. And uh, well, I, I don't want to do that. Okay. I just don't want to do I'm that. I'm a software I'm, developer. I'm a small business, <laughs> and I don't think my, my duty to the public goes that far. Yeah, but you know what? It doesn't cost that much today to encrypt your, to properly encrypt your systems to keep these guys out. Okay, case study, okay? Okay. I'm, I'm a guy works for a small business. I have a press release. I mean, it's a public business, public okay. company. I have a press release I'm going to send to all my press connections, okay? 
and I put it in my in my documents folder in my computer. Okay. And I haven't pushed the button. Now <clears throat> I come to you and I say, Chris, you know, I'm a little concerned about what happened in Bulgaria, uh -huh. and I want to I want to I don't want anybody to criticize me for uh, you know being vulnerable to them and you know, being party to an early disclosure of this information, which could lead to insider trading. Uh, so help me. Now, what are you going to say? What are you going to do for me? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to encrypt your email server. And there's something called pretty good encryption, which is a, 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 a was, that's used by the news people. In so fact, it's uses only pretty good. No, no, pretty what, good what, is what, really what, good. What, 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 it's what called about, pretty I'm, good encryption. What about better, better no, than no, pretty it, good? You know, pretty good encryption is the best <laughs> encryption out there when it comes to email <laughs> servers. It's actually a technology. It just happens to be named pretty good encryption. But when it comes to an email server. That's the, that is the state-of-the-art encryption that's used by news reporters to keep foreign governments out of their, their press releases so they don't get thrown in jail or worse. Oh, you mean when they're writing offshore? That's right. Oh. That's right. They, and if you're not using pretty good encryption for your email server, shame on you. Okay, because that's the okay. standard. So first of all, how does it work? Well, it, encrypts, it, it uses an encryption algorithm, um, what they call a hashing algorithm. Um, that it takes the information that you have and it, it, it binds a key to it. Um, and it binds a public and a private key. And so when you send the information out, um, there's an algorithm. It's a fairly sophisticated algorithm without going into the minutia. But it's just the NSA itself cannot break this encryption. Okay, if you apply the encryption, you're, whatever you're encrypting will be safe. Okay. Is that what they call 120? No, it's way, way beyond that now. You're way in, beyond yes, that now. Yeah, you're, you're that's in, old stuff. That's old stuff, yeah. yeah. We're looking at 10, 24, and beyond encryption. Wow. Um, so um, we're using a much more sophisticated encryption algorithms. The NSA is complaining. They're trying to figure out how to develop a quantum uh, computer platform algorithm that can break encryption. But they haven't, done, but they it haven't done it. It's going to okay, take so a long time. It sounds like it's pretty good. It's pretty good if you just use it. Say pretty good. That's uh, yeah. Wrong term. <laughs> okay. Now, now I yes. can feel then that I have met my duty if I if I um, uh, install pretty good uh, con for, protection for sending emails on my yeah. Yes, this is just for sending emails though. So. But you said it was unbreakable. It's unbreakable it for sending. It's good but for it, everything. Well, oh, no, no. You need to use a different. Like if you're storing stuff in a database. Yeah. Okay, which often that is our default approach yeah. as we store something in either a, a relational database or a document database. Uh, there's other encryption, like you should have a firewall, hardware firewall set up. Okay, that. Uh, Why isn't pretty good good enough? Well, pretty good's good enough for email, it's but it's designed just for email. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's just for email. It's okay. just for email. Okay. 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 So, well, let's go back to pretty good on okay. the email. How much is it going to cost me? To encrypt my email. As far as I know, it's all open source, so you should be able to just go get, download it. I mean, I can look, download pretty good protection. Yeah, yeah. Without spending any money. I don't think you have to. You may have to spend some money to help you set it up, but I believe all the the technology, all the the stuff that you need, is available for free as open source download. Wow, well, that's so. That's a that's one of those factors that would add you know fuel to the claim. That I did not meet my duty. If That's I didn't right. Have you haven't like met your that. duty. That's right. Because it was free, essentially. So. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to go to commercial. Jay, we'll come back and listen. Something let's... I said. Yeah. <laughs> something Zuri said in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Leith, and this is Economy and You. I'm here with Jay Fidel, and we're talking about uh, software encryption and uh, and some of the hacking that's been going on. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Aloha. You know. This is Alice Lee Hagen, host of Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My show here at Think Tech Hawaii is every Thursday from 3 to 4 in the afternoon. I bring in interesting guests from Hawaii, the mainland, and hopefully international guests in the future. Do join us on Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. Aloha. Hi, I'm your host on Think Tech Asia, Bill Sharp. I look forward uh, to you joining us each Monday between 4 and 5 o'clock uh, when we film right here in our studio in downtown Honolulu. The show, Think Tech Asia, focuses on contemporary events in Asia. And by Asia, we mean anything from Hawaii, south to Australia and New Zealand, well, west to Pakistan, and as far north as the Russian Far East. Clearly, this is one of the most economically dynamic centers of the world. 
Uh, and we bring you up to date on what's going on in a whole host of countries in this very vital region. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Okay, we're back. Hi, Jay. We're back. I'm Chris Letha. This is Economy and You. And uh, I'm Chris Letham, and we're just talking about, we've been talking about some of the, the issues with hacking that's going on and uh, what's happening in the, in the stock market and some of the challenges that folks are having. But when we're talking about internet security, Jay, um, what we're really talking about is applying something called due diligence, you know, uh, that you should set up your, your servers and you should harden your systems. Um, and the other thing that you don't do is you don't advertise what systems you're using. Or what, you know, one of the things that hackers would like to know is what kind of a system you have so I can exploit the vulnerabil vulnerabilities of your system. Um, and so um, that's one of the things that uh, when you talk about how they were able to get access to all these documents, it's because they haven't hardened their systems to protect them. It's a moving target. I mean, so you tell me the pretty good software can stop, you know, even the NSA now, but in six months' time, they may find a way to break through it. Actually, I think it's going to take years, but the problem, of at course... At some point. At some point. At some point. And at that point, you know, have you met your due diligence um, by using pretty, pretty good software? Because if it's not going to stop the NSA or whoever else is attacking it, then maybe you haven't. You're behind the curve. You're responsible if you if you don't go to the next step, which would be very good software, another company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, these algorithms it, are, um, they had actually had a competition to develop some of these encryption algorithms. Uh, there was something called SHA-2. Uh, there was SHA-1, and they found some vulnerabilities in SHA-1, so then there was a SHA-2 that was developed. And SHA-2 was pretty good, and then somebody figured out a vulnerability within SHA-2, uh, or potential vulnerability. I don't think it was actually exploited, but there was a potential vulnerability. And so they had a competition in, with all these mathematicians from Harvard and all these really great schools. And these young guys came up with something called SHA-3, which turns out to be one heck of an algorithm and at this point is unhackable. So if they apply these types of security um, algorithms to uh, their platforms, uh, whenever they're sending information around, uh, they're protected. At this point, we could say they're protected. It's all changing so fast, though. So, I mean, you, you could think you did the right thing, met your, your duty of due diligence and not. I mean, for a couple of things on, uh -huh. on this. Uh, IBM, the last couple of days, uh, they bought a company that had virtually billions of x-rays, uh -huh. anonymous x-rays from patients. You, you saw this? No, I have and, not. And they're, and they're using this with artificial intelligence to teach a machine how to recognize an x-ray that shows, for example, cancer. Yes. Okay? Yes. So, uh, and radiologists don't necessarily see this. That's right. Because when you do an MRI, you do all these slices, mm -hmm. and each slice, you know, could reveal something where the other slices don't reveal it, and you have mm -hmm. to go through all the slices. That's right. And, and a machine could go through the, you know, a computer could go through all those slices and match it up against its understanding, which it learns, AI, right? It learns. It learns. Do you know how it learns? Tell me. It learns by sampling. In other words, the more samples I have of something, this is how speech recognition software works. The more samples that you have of people speaking a certain, making a certain word, using a certain word, or making a certain sound, and the computer recognizing that, that's how that algorithm works. So it's going to work the same way with imagery as well. So if I take, if I've got uh, a million photographs that I can scan, and I know that there's cancer in there, or a certain type of cancer, and I get sampling of those, pretty soon what's going to happen is the computer's going to have an algorithm that it can detect cancer better than we can. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's effectively be, being, re relying on all of these many, many, many x-rays that it sees. Right. And the number of x-rays, I mean, it's boggling. Is Billions, mm -hmm. billions and billions and billions of x-rays. So it knows all of that. Wow, that's a lot to know. And so when it goes through and applies its, uh, its algorithm, its comparison mm -hmm. against uh, what it knows from all these x-rays, it can find it a lot faster, a lot more in a sophisticated way, more sophisticated than a radiologist with the naked eye you know, can find a problem on well, one x-ray. Well, that's right. And if he's, if he's sleepy, if it's a late night, he's tired, um, yeah, so it could be. Yeah. Uh, all, I'm, all I'm saying is that this is this is a, a leap forward here, uh, because of the the amount of sampling, and <clears throat> one day we can't read through this very, uh -huh. very good algorithm, uh -huh. or pretty good algorithm. <laughs> Next day we can, 
And so, you know, the, the problem is, do you, as an ordinary person in the marketplace, a mom and pop, what have you, mm -hmm. or a mom and pop small co public company, you know, these days, there are public companies that are so big, they make other pub public companies look really small. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a mom and pop public company, uh, can you be charged with the responsibility of knowing that, algorithm, that, uh, that IBM just did this and somebody else just did this? And, well, somebody else and, may develop a competitive algorithm, too. Yes, uh, better. Yes, and better. And, of course, that's the, the, the joy you, of the workplace. And this is know why... It. You have to know it. You have You're to know it. You're charged with responsibility to know it. And that's why smart is the new rich, Jay. You have to Whoa. be smart. Smart is the new rich. Are That's you leading why up to a break with that? <laughs> yes, I am. We're going to go to a commercial break. I'm Chris Leith, and we're going to be back with Richard Foley from the uh, Republican Party. And thanks for being on my show today, Jay. Aloha. Goodbye. Bye. Ted Ralston, folks, host of our show at Think Tech Hawaii called Where the Road Leads, where we talk about technology influencing the future of Hawaii. Technology, of course, is the art of solving problems. We always bring in interesting and informed guests who can see from different perspectives and different points of view how that future might unfold and how technology can assist us in getting there. So once again, join us 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock on Fridays. Uh, Ted Ralston, your host. And please, if you have ideas that you'd like us to address on this show or folks who you think should be on it, let us know. How you doing? I'm Gordo the Texar here on Think Tech Hawaii, where we co-host Hibachi Talk, where we talk about technology and bring in all kinds of cool guests. Also, my co-host with me today is Andrew, Andrew the Andrew the Security Guy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii, and thanks for watching Hibachi Talk. We also have Angus. And you there, lad? It's Angus. I bring in all kinds of wee things. Oh, look! You see my lips moving. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. Um, I'm Jay Fidel. I'm the host of uh, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, which is the Energy Policy Forum's program on Wednesday. That's how we call Wednesday Energy Wednesday. We call it Energy Wednesday every Wednesday. <laughs> Are you surprised? Okay, and we and we try to we get guys like Jim Alberts here from Hawaiian Electric who can tell us what's really going on in energy. We want to be informed. It's so important. It's the most important initiative in our state. <laughs> Clean energy is major, okay? And that's why we cover it on this show. That's the deal. What do you think, Sharon? I think that's great. That's why we're here every Wednesday from 4 to 5, and we hope you all join us so we can hear people like Jim coming on our show and co-host Ray Starling from Hawaii Energy. Okay, Jim, you've been here today. You've seen this. You heard what she said. What do you think? I think it's a tremendous opportunity for people to come together and talk about the issues. Oftentimes, there isn't a good forum to bring these key issues out into the public and this is a tremendous way to go about it and the the activity of this show is essential to keep talking about energy because as you said it's such an essential part of our lives that we need to pay attention to it and we need to think about the future okay ray your turn well this is a special time in the history of hawaii where we're making some pretty radical changes in the way we uh, use energy and generate energy and this show is the one place you can count on coming to every Wednesday and hearing something about the latest issues that are on the table being discussed that will affect us all going forward so uh, come join us and if you have some ideas you want to share with us about energy uh, give us a call and let us know we'll we'll put you up here and uh, and let you talk for an hour so uh, come see us. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Jim. It's great to be, from ThinkTech's point of view, it's great to have this show. We love the show. It's our, it's our most important <laughs> show. So come around and listen to us 4 to 5 on Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Bye. Aloha. All right. Hey, we're live. I'm Chris Leith, and this is The Economy and You. Richard Foley, thank you for being on the show. Great to be here. Appreciate better, it, Chris. Better Thank late you. than never, isn't it? I apologize. <laughs> well, Richard's here from the Republican Party. And I asked Richard to come onto the show to talk about some of the, the things that are going on. We've just had the debates. Uh, Jay and I, uh, Jay Fidel and I were just talking a little bit, and then, of course, mm -hmm. he diverted me onto the whole thing about what's going on in the securities market. But um, with, the, with the debates going on and such, I wanted to kind of get a feel from you. Um, what's going on within the Republican Party here in Hawaii and, 
How did you sort of get mixed up in all of this? Well, I, I got to say, it, it's uh, it's a great event when you have 24 million people watching watching a debate. You know that that's uh, that's a record for um, any non-sports uh, cable show. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, it, it was really good to see uh, uh, people throughout the entire country tuned into a very important discussion that's current going currently going on nationally. And I think, uh, and it was a great show. It was, it was it a was, great show. It was like, a spectacle, wasn't it? Everybody, uh, you know, they had uh, people who tuned in were were very interested in, in what everyone had to say there, and uh -huh. they stayed engaged yeah. uh, throughout the entire debate. So that was good to see. It was good to see. And uh, Meg, uh, what was her name? Meg Kelly, Megan Kelly, asked some pretty tough questions. Oh she? yeah, yeah. And 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 I think she's I think she's a great reporter, and they. They didn't uh, play uh, any dodgeball. They, they threw out some really hard-hitting questions and questions that uh, uh, the people in the United States of America want to know mm -hmm. um, the answers to. And you think I, they're a little picking on poor Donald Trump oh, just a no, little too much? That's, you know, the people came, people, <laughs> you know, he's, he's um, <clears throat> in the polls, he's the front runner, and uh -huh. people want to know what he has to say. Yeah. So, uh, of, of course, uh, the, the majority of the questions are... Uh, very hard-hitting questions are going to go towards the front, front runner, regardless of whoever it is. That's right. You know, there there, there may right. be a time here in the near future where it's not Donald, and mm -hmm. whoever the front runner is at that time, I'm sure will you know, will have a very difficult time because people are going to want to know what they have to say. It's like whoever's on the top of the the mound is the one they're throwing rocks at. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. It's good. So how did you get there? You you ran for for office last time round? Uh, yes, uh, I, I was very fortunate to uh, represent uh, House District 47 on the uh, North uh, Oahu mm -hmm. and uh, made a run for the Senate and unfortunately uh, uh, wasn't successful but yeah. um, was able to to accomplish uh, a, a lot of things along the way uh, uh -huh. for the district and for the people and to help bring uh, a greater degree of balance to the state of Hawaii. Well, we need a competition of ideas. Oh, absolutely. We definitely need a competition of ideas. So, um, so now you're, you're, what is your position with the Republican Party today? Uh, I am the chair of uh, the Honolulu County. Um, so we have a state chair. Okay. And then within, uh, under the state organization, there are um, uh, counties. Now, the state, the state chair is Fritz Rolfing. Yes. Okay. Okay, and then you're the chair for? For Honolulu County. For so Honolulu we have a chair County. for so Maui, okay. um, Hawaii Island, mm -hmm. um, and also uh, Kauai. Okay, okay, interesting. Now, you've, you, some of the issues that I know that you wanted to talk about today was um, this, uh, the, one of the, the issues, of course, is the University of Hawaii um, not feeling the love between mm -hmm. the students and the faculty mm -hmm. anymore. Right? Yeah. No, no more loving relationships. They've, they've lost that loving feeling. They yeah, they're not, they're not exactly uh, BFFs, as yeah, they yeah. say, on <laughs> social media. Well, it's kind of a problem. I mean, the idea that teachers could be having relationships with students, I mean, I mean there's no conflict of interest there, right? I mean, if I, you're a student and you're trying to get your grades up a little bit or... I was actually kind of shocked to, to hear that yeah. uh, those types of... Uh, that, um, those kinds of intimate relationships were not outright banned um, in the university, and I, and I, didn't understand exactly why. But there's, there, of course, there's there's a whole host of issues uh -huh. uh, regarding the University of Hawaii. There's uh, some, um, you know, there there are challenges there between the University of Hawaii and and trying to work with the state legislature, with uh, issues kind of related to the the university's uh, uh, kind of autonomy status that they were given a number of years ago, uh -huh. and what they've kind of done with with the autonomy that they've been given. Uh -huh. Also, and, and that's kind of directly related to how, <coughs> um, primarily related to the tuition hikes on students. Uh, now, is the pay good for teachers? Do, peach, do teachers get paid well at the university? Uh, yes, anybody who's um, making over six figures in the state of Hawaii, I think the people of Hawaii would say they're- They're, they're getting paid pretty well. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So they don't need the side benefit of being able to to have uh, relations with the students, right? So that, that doesn't really need to be there. Uh, I, think, I think for the health of, of the institution itself, just yes. to, to do away with some of those gray areas, uh -huh. um, I, I, I think it's, it's just for the overall benefit of the institution, um, which is very critical and important to uh, the, the people of Hawaii. It is. That we just have some clear boundaries between those um, in authority and, uh -huh. have the, and, and have so much influence over um, young people. Yes. Yes, because um, I know it, it, it would just seem like a no-brainer, right? I'm teasing a little bit, but it would, it's a no-brainer, yeah. right? I mean, you know, this, 
the, the idea that they would have something like this going on in the first place. And that it would have to be kind of played out in the public eye as right. well, because you think, well, people of that stature carrying that kind of responsibility would be able to resolve uh -huh. um, an issue like this uh, right. on their own. And you ought to know better. Yes. As we would say back home, you ought to know better. Yes. Okay, you ought to know better be, be messing around with the students if you're a teacher. And so if, if see, so and, and that's the problem, we're kind of running into a gray area where it's not against the rules at the University of Hawaii to mm -hmm. have that kind mm -hmm. of a relationship between a faculty member and, and a student. And, you know, it, it just, there's, if, if, there, if there does exist, whether that, that um, relationship is appropriate or not, mm -hmm. um, it, it's just called into question because then, you know, the grade that a, that a student gets, right. you know, people, you know, other students in the class may feel it's because of a relationship mm -hmm. outside of the classroom right. that, that they right. have. So, and you should, and, and teachers truly should not be using their status and their position. No, because they are in a position of authority right. over over these students, and mm -hmm. uh, um, I think there needs to just be clear boundaries so that everybody feels comfortable and everybody feels good about uh, what's going on. So let's talk about some other clear boundaries. Hiko and next Terra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we still having that love and feeling between Hiko, mm -hmm. the Hiko and next Terra mergers. Where are we at with that? Is well, that a, a, a marriage made in heaven or not? Um, it's it's been uh, very interesting to see that that relationship develop, uh -huh. and um, especially I think it would be a much hotter topic if uh, oil prices were what they were just a few months ago. But mm -hmm. because we've seen such mm -hmm. a severe drop uh, drop in the in the in the price of, of oil, which has directly impacted our, our uh, electricity costs here uh, in the islands, um, but we're not always going to have that kind of relationship with oil prices they 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 most likely will go up well you know yes. sometime yes. sometime in the future and we need to start looking uh for solutions to the future challenges that we're going to have well next year is promises to bring in some new technology right yes. and then we know that hico has had a problem with their business model for quite some time they have a a centralized power generation business model which yes. now has been sort of twerked by all the solar panels on people's homes, Correct. but their response to that has not been um, sort of forward leaning. It's been more reactive, uh, even at times saying, okay, you guys can't add any more people to the solar. You know, instead of coming up with solutions, like, hey folks, we want to introduce, um, you know, maybe localized uh, battery storage stations where you can store power locally and start building those out into the community. Well, that was actually something that, you know, I, I was in a position where I, where I sat on the uh, energy committee in, in the state legislature, and we had uh -huh. some lengthy discussions in regards to this, because um, the legislature was about to mandate that HECO have these battery storage um, uh, units. Yeah. And, uh, what a and great I idea. think 600 megawatts is, is what they wanted, right? Which was a great idea. Yeah. But when you, uh, there were people there from, um, who were from the, the energy storage industry, and I asked them, okay, they were going to mandate 600 megawatts of energy storage. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what's the cost of storing one megawatt of energy? And it came out to $5 million. So you're looking at a range of between 3 and $5 million per megawatt of energy storage. See, I, that, that's so just if we, if we were gonna, me. So if we were going to mandate uh -huh. 600 megawatts of energy storage, you're looking at 600 times a number between 3 million and 5 million. So that puts an enormous amount of pressure on HECO if we, man if we mandated a, a, a upon them to, to store renewable uh -huh. energy, then they have to go extract what would easily be over a billion dollars worth of revenue from their rate payers so why in not, order to pay for it. Why not look at, okay, so this is story, story in a traditional battery model, right? Okay. Are there other, that kind of money, that's a lot of money. Okay, so are there other mechanisms such as maybe using to generate, like to pump water into tanks? Uh, and then, and that becomes, and, then, and then releasing the water or other scenarios like this where you could use sort of the na natural forces of gravity. Well, uh, Chris, I, 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 I would like to believe that um, such that we would have a greater dialogue uh -huh. of, of these types of solutions within the state legislature before we mandate. Because I'm full of one in particular. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, we don't we don't have um, that degree of discussion, right? Where we're vetting the best possible options. Uh -huh. Where someone says, "Okay, we're going to go with this option," and then they have their guys that they're going to already go with without having 
um, mm. a full full spectrum of, of choices. But to choose you know, from. here's one of the challenges I found. I found that if people, the bureaucrats, don't like something, they always have they'll come down to the legislature and they'll tell you 20, 20 million reasons why it won't work. And then sure enough, somewhere else, somebody else has figured out a way to make it work. Yeah. Um, and that may be because of these sort of um, uh, uh, fiefdoms. You know, we have a, a just all these little fiefdoms here in yes. Hawaii yes. Uh, within the bureaucracy. And they don't want to play nice with everybody else because they're Yeah, they get very jealous to, of their, that's, of their that's territory. Right. That's right. So uh, these sort of territorial boundaries, you know, I'm, I'm a believer that we need to start eating more sacred cows. There are too many sacred cows floating around in the bureaucracy here. In well, and that's th that's why it's it's very interesting to see what uh, next uh, next era actually has to offer. Mm -hmm. Because if they're going to introduce um, new technologies mm -hmm. into the state of Hawaii right. that will help lower uh, the cost and help advance, I mean, we have some serious challenges with the grid uh, here in the state of Hawaii yes. and with uh, power outages. Um, and this is something that w we are not prepared. We for the 21st state. century. The state of Hawaii is not prepared for the 21st century um, when it comes to energy. Well, um, smart grid technology, for example. We should be implementing smart grid technology. Yes. We should also be doing more to ensure that we've got redundancy. Um, we, and the, I, I question, have we fully exploited uh, the ability to generate power from uh, geothermal? Has um, that been fully exploited? I question that. Th there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of opportunities in the geothermal area. Uh -huh. um, which of course would be great for a state like Hawaii because it's energy that we own and produce here locally within the state and That's we don't right. import it from another country. Mm -hmm. and, and the interesting thing is is, is, is the, the oil that we use here in the state of Hawaii um, is actually um, from foreign sources. Yeah. It's, it's not like it's coming from Texas or, we're, or somewhere not, like we're that. We're not using Texas oil. Okay, we're using foreign oil. Well, we only have about a minute and a half left. So I, while you're here, is there anything else that you'd like to touch on that you'd like people to reach out to the Republican Party, to reach out to you if they want to know more about our platforms on various topics? Well, I, I, a huge part of it um, has to come with uh, uh, introducing Hawaii into what the economy is going to look like over the next hundred years. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that comes with solutions to the incredible economic housing crisis that we yes. have, the cost of living crisis that we have. Uh, here in, in the state of Hawaii, addressing the higher educational concerns that we have with the University of Hawaii. That's right. Um, so we have to do another show. We have to do another show. We'll talk about some of these issues on the next show. Next time, you'll be on time. Yes, I will be on time. <laughs> I apologize. But we will be, we'll be on and time, this, and these are very important issues. These are important uh, issues. issues. And yeah. after all, the name of the show is called The Economy and You. So yeah. this is the perfect platform for this discussion. So, well, thank you again for, for coming on to the show today, and we get to talk more about some of these very interesting topics, which I think are timely and important for the people of Hawaii to, I to understand. Great to be here, Chris. Okay. Thank you for the, for thank the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to okay. future chances right. to be here. Great. Hi, I'm Chris Leith, and thank you for watching today. Um, and we'll be back again um, in a few weeks. I'm going to be away, but um, I, when I get back, I will see you back live here on... Uh, on Think Tech Hawaii and uh, the economy and you. Aloha and thank you.